Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I built this self-sustaining solar lamp. So we have this gazebo in our backyard with a small grill. It's really great for those long summer evenings, but when it gets dark, using candles is really not uh, the best solution. Well, actually we used to have a lamp in there as well, uh, but it was a really old one and it was broken. And instead of fixing it, I decided that it would be better if I just built something from scrap. The lamp is really long and narrow, so it lights up the table evenly, and I'm just using a LED strip with warm lights, which makes the space feel really nice and cozy. The lamp is powered by two 12 volt solar panels, each producing over 5 volts of power. The voltage is then stepped down to 5 volts to charge the batteries, then the voltage from the battery is taken and boosted back up to 12 volts to run the LEDs. And I understand that the, you know, stepping the voltage down and then right back up to those 12 volts is not efficient at all. It wasn't actually my original plan, uh, but I just had to change it uh, as I was building it, so I'll explain it in details a little bit later. But now, let's just get right into the build. For this project I just used some scrap wood that I had laying around. I believe that this wood was originally used as a fence post. Once I had it cut, I actually sanded the edges as well, which I didn't show in the video, but then I just put it on the table to see how it fits. Everything seemed to fit, so I used two screws on each corner to connect it all together. Once this was done, I sanded the edges once again, just to make sure that everything fits together nicely. Then I just used some lacquer for the finish. And you are probably thinking, why the orange color? Well, when life gives you oranges, you... Wait, what? While that was drying, I started to work on the board that holds the LEDs. I needed to cut holes on each end for the chain to go through. So I thought that I can just use a large drill bit to uh, do that, but it didn't actually work, so I needed to use my Dremel to uh, do those. And once that was done, I went ahead and just uh, screwed it in place. So I got this chain from a hardware store, and they had a bunch of chains in there, but I liked this one the most. And apparently it can hold up to 8 kilos, so that should be more than enough. I got 2 meters of it, and it was plenty, even after I used some to create the switch. In order to attach the chain to the frame, I just used a screw and a couple of washers on each end. I also made sure that it's exactly in the center, so that the lamp doesn't tilt. So this is what the frame looks like after all of that was finished. So next thing was just to add the LED strip. Now I attached the LEDs directly onto the wood, which is obviously not a good idea because they do get quite hot and there is no way for them to dissipate the heat. So if I had to do it again, actually I would do it the same way just because I'm lazy, but that doesn't mean that it's done correctly. Anyway, the next thing to do was an awesome chain switch. And for that I just used the normal switch which I modified. So the first thing I did, I just 3D printed the mount for that. So this mount basically holds the switch itself. Then there is also an M6 bolt with a couple of nuts that act like a spacers. And once that's all done, all that needs to be done, I just basically screw that onto the frame. And I tried to put it as uh, well in the center as much as I could. However, there wasn't enough space, so I had to put it a little bit on the side which basically means that the entire lamp swings whenever you turn it on and off, which kind of sucks, but there simply wasn't enough room. Maybe if I actually redesigned it again, it could work better, but oh well, it's done now. And the way I attached the chain itself, I basically just took short length of the chain, created a loop at the end, put it onto the bolt and secured it in place with a couple of nuts. For the electronics, all you need are two solar panels. These are 12 volts, uh, 5.2 watts. And I also got three lithium batteries, one uh, step-down converter, and this uh, battery charger circuit. Now I ended up also needing a step-up converter as well, but we will come to that a little bit later. And also we only need one battery charger, we don't need three of them. My original idea was to actually connect all batteries in series and that would make around those 12 volts. However, when I connected them in series, the charging circuits, uh, you know, there was supposed to be one for each battery, but that didn't really work. So I had to scrap that and instead I just connected them in parallel. 
and connecting them all just to one circuit. So that way I got one battery that is just 3.7 volts but has a much larger capacity. Actually, before I connected them together, I first uh, charged them all up to make sure that they are at the same voltage level and then I connecting them to make sure that they will be leveled since there will be only one charging circuit. Next, I connected the step-down converter into the charging circuit and that one basically just takes the voltage from the solar panels and turns it into 5 volts so it can charge the battery. In order to create the case, I once again used my 3D printer. Now this was a rather large print, so I used PLA and heated bed, and that way the edges didn't actually lift at all. And since this is a 3D print, everything fits perfectly in there, so there is a place where to put the screw terminals, there is also a mounting holes, everything just fits perfectly, so I really like that. You can also find all of the files on the Thingiverse in the description below. The top side is actually just screwed in, in place, but I didn't design it for any particular screw, so I just had to find something that fits in there. After the electronics was done, it was time to take care of the solar panels. Since these are 12 volt solar panels, I connected them in parallel to get higher current out of them. And once again I used my 3D printer, this time to print the mounts for the solar panels, and these mounts basically use nails to secure the solar panel in place. I used two of these uh, in each corner of the solar panel. Once this was done, I actually took some epoxy and made sure that there will be no water leaking around those nails. I don't know what's up with the frame rate, but basically I just used a couple of screws to secure the electronics in place on the bottom of the roof, on a place where I know that the elements will not damage it. The last thing to install was the step-up converter, which basically just takes the 3.7 volts from the batteries and turns into 12 volts so it can power the LEDs. It was a little bit of an afterthought, but it does fit there quite nicely. And after everything was installed, I just took some power cable, connected everything together and it was done. And after using it for a couple of weeks, it really does work quite well. Uh, we also had a hailstorm and the solar panels are just fine, they didn't crack or anything. I was also checking if the batteries are okay and they seem to be uh, they seem to be fully charged so I don't see any problems so far and I think that it did turn out very well. If you have any questions or any suggestions about this, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.